All right, this is Kat Sturz from rockingyourpath.com with another episode of Fast Action Fridays. And as I tell told everybody in the promotions for this week, you are my special guest, whether you're here live in a uh, lab with us from the comfort of your own home or on the road or studio or business, or you're watching it on the replay later. I want you to be the focus of this particular episode. And I'm going to be sharing one of my favorite topics. Um, it's one that Cindy has invited me to present on her uh blog talk radio show. Cindy, go ahead and pop that into the live chat so they know where to pick that up. We did that, what, a year or two ago now? Yeah. And it's called Five Leaps of Faith Needed to Live the Life of Your Dreams. Now, I am not promising that you will reach the pinnacle of everything that you ever desired by following these five leaps. But what I am saying is your journey will be easier happier, more successful, and greater opportunities will open up to you that you can take advantage of if you put these into action. And only you can put these into action. I can hope for you. I can pray for you. I can do all kinds of things for you. I can support you as well as everybody else here can do that on your behalf. But none of it will happen until you take the action on these five steps and you actually take the leap yourself. So what are these five leaps? Well, the first one is you have to acknowledge your intuition. Now, I know there are a lot of people who think only certain people have intuition. But let me tell you something. We are all born intuitive. It's part of our nature. And in my mind, intuition is not separate from our other senses. It's part of our other senses. And we were made to use our intuition with our sight, with our hearing, with our taste, with our touch, with our feelings. That's part of the reason why my company name is 56 Vibes. It marries the five normal senses that we think of with what some people call the sixth sense, intuition. But you have to put them together and you have to acknowledge that it exists within you. All right. Oh, that one's such a passion one for me. I could go an hour just on that one alone. All right. When it comes to acknowledging your personal intuition, you have to understand that there are three levels of intuition. And most people stop at the first level and don't give consideration and enough attention to the third. All right. The second one just sort of happens and they they uh, they live it and they abide by it and they even uh, call upon it sometimes, but they don't really think about it a lot. So the first level of intuition, which is the farthest reaching one uh, in terms of the universe and our lives here on earth, that's a universal level. Um, and you can think of it this way. There are terms we use that we all have a common denominator of understanding. For instance, water is universally described as having an emotional energy connection, an emotional energy to it. So in terms of intuition, when you dream about water, when um, other things happen to you on water, it's usually an emotional response you're having to that. The second level of intuition is cultural or ethnic. And these are the things that we are taught to believe based on our upbringing, based on our uh, parents, where we live, the culture we live in. For instance, the American flag has a much different resonance within us energetically if we are patriotic Americans, as opposed to someone who may have come here from another country, may have allegiance to another place, the American, or may have had trouble with even their own countrymen uh, and countrywomen, it may not carry that same symbolism. And that's what intuition is. When you're looking for intuition, you're looking for the symbolism, the sign 
the symbolism, the scenario that matches to what you're trying to understand about your intuition. The third level is the one so many people ignore, and it's the one that's the most important. And that's your personal level of intuition. And that has to do with the signs and symbols, people in your lives, the things you think about and how they resonate with you energetically. And let me give you an example of that one. Now, universally, snakes are often considered to be uh, in the medical realm. All right. We have a caduceus that has a snake wrapped around it. That's a symbol of the medical community. But if you're afraid of snakes, that's going to resonate differently with you if you dream about snakes or have images of snakes or a snake goes across your path unexpectedly. And then think about the difference of the cultural or ethnic um, symbolism of snakes. India, for instance, that has this uh, where so many have this wonderful uh, resonance with the king cobra, you know, the one that stands up and kind of dances when they play music and people move. Highly deadly snake if it's, you know, in its natural environment and threatened. And it's not something that most of us want to deal with, but it has a certain ethnic cultural resonance with people um, of a certain culture or background, all right? So number one, that first leap of faith is I want you to acknowledge that intuition exists within you. Even if you deny it, it's still there. It may come to you as gut feelings, my own. I get a lot of butterflies that uh, I can feel fluttering in my belly region when, um, and that's one of my prime intuition uh, notices. And a lot of times you'll see me look down. And if I look down like this, it's like, okay, guys, please fly in formation so I can understand what you're, what you're trying to express to me. Number two, you got to learn to trust your intuition. And that's a biggie. That's a big leap for a lot of people. They are willing to acknowledge they have a little bit of intuition. They are, they'll, they'll acknowledge that they get that gut reaction sometimes. Um, you may meet someone for the first time and instantly you feel like friends or neighbors or that you met in a in another circumstance or you get a bit of deja vu and you know what's going to come out of their mouth when that happens. And then there are times you'll meet someone and you'll reach out to shake their hand and everything in your being says this person is not to be trusted with your life, your business, with your emotions. And you need to pay attention to that because that's a danger signal. That's an intuitive uh, feeling, an energy vibe that's within you. Now, does this happen sometimes when we may have a um, cultural disconnect with someone, maybe uh, a racial bias or a cultural or a religious bias. Yes, it does. But you first have to acknowledge that you got something and then you can investigate what that is and what that means to you and why it's happening to you. Maybe the message is, I really like this person, but my vibes are telling me otherwise. Or you're meeting someone that you've been told not to trust, but you're feeling very trustworthy. So the idea is the intuition is talking to you. This is something else you need to explore more deeply. All right. Three, this is a biggie for those of us building businesses, wanting to be happier, more successful in our lives. And it's to aim farther than you think you can reach. You know, I don't want to just reach that beautiful pen, my favorite pen over here that I love to write with. That's fine. I want to reach beyond that. I want to reach to the moon, to the stars. And am I going to get there? Not likely in my lifetime, but I'll tell you if somebody gave me a ticket to the space shuttle, shuttle that was going off in a, in a month, I would try my darndest to be on it. But it's part of my reach. It's part of my understanding. It's on my passion list of things to do. Do I actually expect to be able to pull that one off? No, but knowing that reach is out there, that I have that identified goal has led me to read books that I never would have read before, to 
talk to people that I've never uh, talked before that have uh, an interest or who have even been in space. I mean, Dennis and I had the opportunity to meet, meet John Glenn uh, and spend some one-on-one -on -one time with him. And I'll tell you this thing about John Glenn, he's a whole lot taller than I ever expected him to be, to fit in that little capsule that he went up into space in the first time. All right, number four is you have to take action on the intuitive insight you get. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, number one, the first action you need to take is that, whoops, I'm getting an intuitive vibe of some kind. Something is telling me some information, okay? You may not understand what that information is. The information is just a jar. It's kind of like a tap on your shoulder that says, pay attention. Uh, this has kept me safe in many, many situations, and I truly believe that. Um, I have been on speaking engagements, and when I'm done, uh, my car may be parked in uh, you know, a fancy parking garage somewhere and my car's way off in the dark and I'll start my journey to my car and you get these creepy feelings on the back of your neck and you look around and you don't see anybody but nothing feels safe and I like to be a brave sort of person I like to feel like I can you know weather anything but when that happens and it has happened to me I go back to the guard booth and I do what's allowed I ask for an ex escort to my car. If I can see my car where it is, and it's only a few more steps, I make sure I have my keys in my hand. I look into the car before I open the door. I lock that car the minute I get in. Now, could I be wrong about my interpretation of what's going on? Absolutely. But in that moment, I took action and paid attention to my intuition, and I fully believe that it's kept me safe in many instances. There are other things uh, that happen. It kept me safe on a night, uh, a scary night, uh, when I left my first husband. You know, uh, I was dealing with intuition that night to get me out of a very scary situation and over to safety. Uh, who knows where I'd be right now if that hadn't happened. All right, so you have to take action. You have to take a step forward in whatever direction you think is the right thing to do in that moment, even if you aren't 100% sure it is the right thing. And even if you're not 100% sure it's the goal you tr truly want to reach. Because life isn't meant to be a straight line from here to here. Life is a bunch of crooked paths. And I don't believe that any path is the wrong path for us. I believe we can follow any path of our choosing. I can, I do believe that we can make wrong choices along that path. And that's a discussion for another day. All right. One more thing about taking a step forward. When I first learned to ride horses and owned my first horse and my daughter started taking lessons to become a better horsewoman because she was uh, doing fairs and showing, one of the things that surprised me was learning that even stepping backwards, a horse must make a forward action to do that. They must engage their hips, move them under their body to, to have the proper balance to back up. And if you have ever watched a rodeo um, event where they do patterns and they come to that sliding stop, or you see a horse back up on command for, you know, yards at a time in a, that straight line on command, you will see that action of that backup where being first engaged in a forward movement. So even though I want you to take action as the fourth leap of faith, Sometimes that action means taking a step back. Engage your hips in, in a rhetorical, not a rhetorical, in a liter, uh, figurative way, there's my word, in a figurative way to find out why you're going to be stepping backwards first and what's going around. Sometimes I've needed to step backwards to see that the group of people I was engaging with were not the kind of people 
or individuals at that moment that were going to help me grow as a person, as an individual in a business. The dynamic just wasn't there. It was a misery loves company dynamic. And while they may grow and thrive in the future, in the moment, it wasn't the right place for me. So my action was to take a step back from that group and take a step forward into another group. The fifth leap of faith is love. You have to love yourself. If you don't love yourself, you're not going to allow yourself to make mistakes and then move past them. You're not going to spread your love so you have the best intentions when you're working with other people. All kinds of things go screwy wrong if we don't love ourselves. We get sick. We uh, contaminate with bad vibes the uh, energy around us. It's that misery love, loves company sort of things. Uh, oftentimes people in a misery love company environment uh, may say they love themselves, but their actions are showing that they really don't. There's something missing from their lives. And within that, you have to look for those barriers and hidden uh, obstacles and hidden barriers within your own life. Now, when it comes to obstacles, I tell people, obstacles are the things that you know are in your path. They're that rut you can see that you got to get out of, whether your tires literally stuck in mud or uh, a depression you're in, it's an emotional rut you're in, or you need uh, cash right now to move forward, to pay a bill or to buy something for your business or to share with a friend or your favorite charity. You need something. If it's an obstacle, you know what that obstacle usually is. Yeah, I can procrastinate with the best of them. For me, procrastination is an obstacle. It's not a hidden barrier. I know it's there. I can take the actions I need to get past it. What's a hidden barrier is why does it crop up at all? And those hidden barriers are what I refer to as four elephants blocking your path. And we can deal with that on another day too. So understand you have obstacles and you have hidden barriers. Know the difference between them. They will help you take action, take a step forward. They will also help you to love yourself more deeply and freely. You need to love yourself unconditionally the same way you want to love your spouse, your children, your best friends, uh, others in the world. All right. Now, as Cindy knows, I always have a bonus sixth leap and it's really important. And I leave it as this bonus sixth one because it's the hardest one for people to take. And it's, you have to, let's see, how do I want to put this? You have to believe in yourself first. I've had so many clients that I've worked with and I have friends and I, I know there are people live in the chat room right now, nodding their head, knowing this one to be true. They were waiting for others to show their support or their encouragement or their belief in them before they wanted to believe in themselves. And here's my message about that. If you aren't willing to believe in yourself, why should anyone else? So believe in your goals, believe in your worth, believe in your ability to love yourself. And then those who will come to support you, encourage you, but help you believe in yourself even more fully, help move you forward while you help them move forward. Those people will materialize because you'll be drawing them in with the right energy. So those are the five leaps of faith plus the bonus one. What do you guys think about those things? Cindy and Dennis are here. I invited them into the seat. There is another open seat if somebody would like to join us today. You just hit, hit the button. Cindy, why don't you start? Oh, you you're blocked. You're yeah, I, <laughs> there I you go. muted myself because I was typing, so I didn't want that to come across your show. Um, I think the toughest one for me is the last one and believing in myself sometimes. It's like I need other people to believe in me, to believe in myself and that cyclical, that whole cyclical event. Um, 
and how things come on. It's like the more someone believes in me, or the more I can believe in myself. But you're right. If I can't start there, then how do I expect other people to trust me, trust my goals um, and my dreams exactly. to help get Exactly. Exactly. Uh, John uh, Morris from Scotland says, in the words of a famous pastor, no one is going to fight for you or promote for you. You need to figure it out. And that's great. Uh, Pat just joined us. Thank, thank you, Pat. Good morning. Um, Hi. I don't want to butcher your name, which I'm known to do. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> it is Pat Roque. Roque. Like, okay, Roque. Oh, that's so easy to remember that way. Yeah. And I didn't ask you that when we talked the other day. Yeah, okay. All okay. Right. So give us your feedback on this. I think that you really hit the nail on the head on a number of points. The one that seems to resonate nope. with me was around. Did she freeze on you guys a little bit? Is it okay? I. Yeah, she hit the nail and then uh, slid off. Oh, okay. Okay. Just to let you know, Pat, you may, if it stays stuck, you may have to refresh. Uh, we have a lot of great people. Oh, she's okay Am on okay? John's. There we go. John Morris is good. Thank you, John. No, it's on her end. <laughs> cool. Okay. There we go. I see. All right. Well, uh, she was there. So we'll see, give her a second to come back in. I'm going to, Pat, I'm going to kick you out and then come back into the seat. I can leave if you want. Um, all right. You want, if you want to step out, you want to give us, uh, before you do that though, Dennis, give us your take on this. Um, well, I'm, oh, there's Pat. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm going to refresh. So you guys keep talking. The, the <laughs> recording is going. All right. Pat, you're back. I am back. Nice to meet you, Dennis. Nice meeting you. So you were talking at one point in time when we lost you. Okay. So the uh, two things were, were really resonating. One of them is around embracing both imperfect starts and the fact that life is absolutely not a straight line. So in other words, we tend to attract, hopefully, ideally, tend to attract winners, positive people. But the trick is to understand that we're all human. So things are not always great all the time. So you can't really ever compare your beginning to someone else's middle. Because yep. sometimes we look at other people and say, God, they have this many followers or this many clients or they're on the stage and I'm in the seat. And we get a little angst because we're comparing ourselves. And if you think about it, the reality is we are not all any one way all the time. So in other words, even the best and finest examples, Tony Robbins is not up here all the time, every day, 24 seven. Life is an ebb and flow. It's much more like an ocean than a straight line. And he didn't start at the top either. Yeah. You and know? you know, it, they <laughs> yeah, call me the rockstar transformation coach because I was really successful. I started my business in 1988, which I was pretty much in diapers and <laughs> So I've learned a lot and I was on the cover of Cosmopolitan, not cover, but in Cosmopolitan magazine and, and pretty successful, but then hit rock bottom. So people would say, wow, you're doing great. And I always laugh and think I've done great. I've done OK. I've done not so great. And I'm back again in full swing. So don't think about or be ever jealous of the what I call the shiny penny, the what you think you see on the outside of other people, be authentic in your relationships, be authentic in yourself and your message and how you serve other people and do your best. And you will attract, as Kat um, wonderfully put, you'll attract the people you deserve to attract. You shouldn't worry about trying to attract everybody. You will naturally, if you're authentic and true to yourself, gravitate toward the people that you deserve to be aligned with. And be okay with that. Don't worry about what you don't have. Appreciate what you do have, right? Yeah. It's all about goals and gratitude. Embrace what's working. Love yourself. You know, we forget that sometimes. We beat ourselves we up. Oh, I forgot this, or I didn't quite get that, or oh, the client almost signed, and they told me no. Well, guess what? If this client said no, maybe God wanted us to have space for someone else who is more aptly suited for our gift. Exactly. That's, that's the way I like to think about it. 
Yeah, that's so that. Ebb and flow. We think yeah. so. You and I discovered the other day. We think so similarly yeah. about uh, certain sense, things. Um, uh, Cindy wrote, "If out there we're all the same, then we wait." Not Kat and Dennis are both talking. I don't know if you hear oh. each other. We're in different. I can't ways. hear Kat at all. Okay, so you and Kat were both talking at the same time. Okay, literally. Oh, were we? Okay, you don't I hear each other. Cat. Okay, no, so I can hear Dennis. She's. Okay. Locked. So Dennis you can't can hear Kat, her, but Kat can hear Dennis. If you can hear her, then what I'll do is I'll step out for a while <laughs> and see if somebody else wants to step in. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Yeah, so, you came late. We've been having trouble all, all a little few checky problems all morning here. No, um, I was on watching. I, I was on watching, and you know what? It's funny. Um Remember what we just said about everything not being perfect all the time? I did a, a Facebook Live con combined with Blab yesterday and had some of my own little fun glitches. So, uh, you know, people are kind. And I just, instead of getting frustrated about how perfect yeah. I wanted it to be, <laughs> right? Exactly. You just got to say. I couldn't even get on Facebook this morning. Bear with me, guys. Um, We're trying to like. Yeah, if somebody would like to take that open seat, that's great. But what I was saying is that, Pat, you and I think so similarly about some of these things. Cindy does too. I know she does. And what comes up with our hidden barriers, because not only do I agree with Pat when you when you say, if somebody says no to our offer, even though we think we're the perfect person to help them right now, there's something else going on. And if they're saying no, they're saying right now, I don't feel you're the perfect person for me, or there's some other thing. Mm -hmm. What happens though, is sometimes in our it's within our four elephants one of the four hidden barriers we have that makes us feel inferior like we didn't do something the right way now that doesn't mean we can't always be improving on our delivery on our the way we serve other people uh the improving our own uh personal uh communication and business skills that's that's beside the point i'm looking at things that uh environments we've grown up with for years and years. And Cindy knows this because we've had these conversations. She's, she's heard me speak before where I had one of those true fear of success because every time I was more successful, I was punished in some way by family. And the more money I made, the more my family made uh, on the farm, made it harder to exist there, made uh, it made me try to make me feel guilty about certain things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. There's a whole host of things. And I was able to follow with the help of someone else, able to follow back and realize the very loving environment I grew up in, even though we were dirt poor when I was very, very young, I didn't realize the abject poverty I started out in Same. until years later because I, I was surrounded by love. But the minute, but I was also the glue that hold a lot of the family together. And I realized that a lot of the reason I took responsibility at such an early age stemmed from taking responsibility for my mother's life when I was four years old. And I got confirmation of that reading one of her journal entries once. Um, it would have been on my, it was dated the day I would have been four years old. Uh, and wow. like one month old. And the journal entry reads, thank goodness Kathy is such a good girl. She made herself a sandwich for dinner, made me a sandwich, then put me to bed and put herself to bed. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So I had this history of taking care of everybody else. Now, as I grew older, I had dreams of of what I wanted to do. And ever the background I was getting was you can do anything you want. You're smart, you're pretty, you can do. But the minute I stepped out to do those things, family got uncomfortable and wanted me to stay put taking care of them. And that was a hidden barrier I had to figure out. That was part of that fear of success that crept up over and over and over again until I finally figured out it out uh, with the help of a coach in my fifties, you know, wow, that's pretty powerful stuff. Yeah. You can yeah. see how that would hold you back and then you can see how you might not even let it bubble up in the front 
Yeah, but I, owning but that stepping forward is a huge, huge win because now you're, you can look at it and only own your reaction to it, not let it own you. Exactly. Right? Exactly. We do have an open seat, uh, folks. If there's somebody else in uh, here live with us, we've got uh, several people. Sue's here. Um, oops, just, just hey, here. Kat, you're starting to crackle. Your voice is starting to again. It's probably the stormy weather oh. here. So if it gets, that's why I made Cindy a host, just in case I have to uh, refresh it again. Yeah, so, yeah, Cindy, tell us, more, tell us more about the leaps of faith you've taken, because you've taken some big ones recently. Care to share some of those? Oh, I don't know which ones you want me to go to. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and then there's a couple of them. There's one of... Uh, you know, there's positive news, there's going to graduate school, there's things like that. So I guess um, the biggest one is I thought, you know, growing up I was a learning sign language and never wanted to be an interpreter. Got a message about 10 years ago that, oh, maybe it was time to do that. On and on and on, I going to school and trying to do that, it was not working. It just was not working. So I needed to find something else be able to use this sign that's been gnawing at me my whole life. Um, in the process, I lost my eyesight. Um, you know, I didn't know what to do, and how do we combine all of this into something to have it make sense? And so now the latest is applying to graduate school, basically being the first one in my family, um, basically doing it without the finances, um, and saying, what's going to happen and planning to be a rehab counselor regardless of what is going to come out of it. Um, you know, and saying I'm going and I'm going to a private school, which is going to cost more than traditionally, uh, one would want to put out. Um, and saying, I know it's going to, it's what it's supposed to be. It just feels right. It's taking that gut. Like you said, that gut intuition and going, I walked down the campus to do a tour and said, this is my next school hall, <laughs> and it just felt so right. So energetically right for you. Yeah, that's good. The other thing, and I hope you don't mind me mentioning this, but you've set up some boundary choices for yourself recently too that were kind of uh, lackadaisical, and uh, like you had uh, ever ever worked in one of those buildings where they have the movable walls. <laughs> and it seems some people are always moving their, their office walls to make their space bigger while encroaching on other people, you know. Well, sometimes we do that to ourselves, you know, rather than understanding what barriers uh, we want to have for ourselves. So uh, I know, Cindy, that you had a couple important work barriers, uh, boundaries that you um, are abiding by that were your choice of, that that I see some of these other choices you're making coming out of standing in that authority. These are my boundaries. I'm making them. This is what I'm going to do. And then it gave you that confidence to take this other step. Is that a fair assessment? I think I heard you and understood you. Um, as far as setting up boundaries and what I will do, what I won't do, things like that. Is that what you were referring to? Okay. Yeah, I mean, just in even right now, even not being on Blab, it's like okay, my home space is more crowded. I found a space where I can be, you know, see all the stuff, to be able to come on Blabs occasionally, um, where it's acceptable. It's okay, you know, and all counts. Um, and then the other is just like you say, there are some things that I've been asked to do, um, and I'm learning to say. I will do them, but it's going to cost you uh, because there's so many times that I just said, oh, sure, I'll do that. I'll do that. I can do that for you or with you or whatever. And now it's like because I've donated so much of my time and my energy, then I wonder why I'm not making any money. <laughs> so it's starting to come back to, okay, yes, but remember, this is my business. And I'm right. getting this. Right, making the choice. Yep, we can be as generous as we uh, want to be, but we still have bills to pay. I've yet to find an electric company that wants to uh, let me have electric. 
electricity just because I'm a nice person. Right. You can't part of, you can't part of the electric company. It does not work. No, it just doesn't do that. No. Yeah, I'll do your Facebook okay. page if you let me have electricity. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, we have gone over just a little bit because we started a little bit late with the uh, recording. Anybody who is still here live in the chat room, if you'd like to share your um, a message, uh, an email, your freebie offer, your website, uh, I trust people. Uh, there's no one that I can see that's here that I do not trust to put appropriate things in that chat room. I'm looking forward to having uh, Pat Roque <laughs> um, as my guest. Uh, I think in August, August 11th or, or September. Soon. It'll be here soon. And you're going yeah, to love her presentation. I'm going to do a really, really uh, fast recap of the five leaps of faith plus that bonus one while you guys put your stuff in the chat room and then We'll close you're going to so, you're gonna have to refresh, Kat, before you do that. Again? All right. I'll go do that. Hold tight. Yeah, we can't. We'll let her recap that, but to recap it, it's just going to. Yeah, I, I couldn't hear it after a while, too. I, I'm with you, Cindy. Yeah. Let's bring you in, Dennis. Or try to. I think it'll let me bring you in. Let's Here she comes. Yeah, we've got rain again, and that kind of—that's much better. Yeah, cool. Much better. I clicked on Dennis. It's not letting me come in. Letting him get in cat, so you might have to do it. Um, it's not giving me the option. You've got a host option, so if you were able to accept him, Dennis, it's not. Yeah. Dennis, try again. He should, he should just have been able to come in because he's had a host option. Yeah, he is. So he should have been able to. Oh. All right, so let's do a real quick. Uh, summary of those five leaps of faith needed to live the life of your dreams. Number one, acknowledge you have intuition and it's alive and well with you and learn to nurture it. Number two is trust your intuition. It's there for a purpose. That's part of your, your innate natural senses and it's made to work. It's meant to work with your other senses. Okay. Three, is aim farther than you think you can reach. Four, take action. You have to step forward in whatever direction you want to go, even when you aren't 100% sure it's the right thing to do or that the goal itself isn't absolutely perfect for you. Did we lose it? Number five is you have to love yourself. And the bonus six leap that is often the hardest to take and what I believe is Can the most important me? and really should be number one is you have to believe Can in you yourself. Can you hear Stop that? waiting for others to believe in you, encourage you, support you, support your goals and dreams. Believe in yourself first and the other people will come into your life. All right, Dennis, any final words? He doesn't hear you. I don't know why. We hear both of you, but Dennis nope, doesn't Dennis is seem still having problems. You. So yeah. I'm going to thank uh, Pat Roque for joining us live here. Dennis for being able to participate early on. For Cindy for stepping in as a uh, co-host today and sharing some of her thoughts too. We'll see you next week for Fast Action Fridays. And I have an awesome guest uh, coming up next week. It's Yvonne A. Jones. And uh, if you want, uh, check out Facebook, Rocking Your Path for information or the Rocking Your Path community, or join the email list for updates for Fast Action Fridays. And you can do that at rockingyourpath.com. You're the best, Kat. Number six. Number six was believe in yourself. Got it. Thank you. That answer you, Pat? It does, because I'm going to quote right. you. Thanks, everyone. Up. See you next week. Thank you. Bye. Bye.